And um, I think it's really important um, to to work on that uh, aspect as well, since um, if you look at the rural banking landscape, um, some of their clients just spend uh, 200 pesos just to go to their uh, branch to pay yeah. a loan, and it's a lot of money. So, hi everyone! So, welcome to a new episode here at Wealth Archie. So, we have a very special guest here today. So, hi Graham, kamusta ka? I'm good, thanks for asking, Adriel. Uh, so, I invited Graham here today to discuss a bit about the fintech industry. And of course, we'll be discussing his company which is Hyperstacks Inc. So, before we delve into the interview, um, for our new viewers here, so please hit that subscribe button first now because you won't miss a thing if you do. And of course, click that notification bell so that you will be updated for our new videos. Yun. Sige. Awesome. So, yes. So, sige, let's start now. So, Graham, since you're the CEO of Hyperstacks, uh, maybe you can briefly or maybe discuss what Hyperstacks does, how did you start the company, and bakit Hyperstacks yung pangalan? Which is actually a very unique name for a fintech company. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure. Uh, so, in Hyperstacks, uh, we actually develop a lot of um, IT services. So, it goes with um, web apps, mm. websites, mobile applications. And we're not only limited to fintech, but we're also working on a lot of uh, industries. Uh, some industries that we work on are under the construction, e-commerce, and mm. some non-profit uh, websites and organizations. So basically, um, we, we started uh, Hyperstacks way back in 2016, uh, straight out from college, uh, when we mm. realized that um, we, we just wanted to build something. So me and my friends um, rented a room, which is very small. Uh, it's like a um, 10 square meter room. Then Eventually, uh, we got our first client, uh, which mm. is uh, from Singapore, and we were able to build um, some partnerships as well. So that's how we started. So, so over the past four years, um, it's been a tough challenge to yeah. grow the company. So, from a team of um, four people, right now we have around uh, seventeen people in the team already which is uh, growing quite steady. And um, even during this uh, pandemic, um, things, uh, IT services are still enabled. So uh, did, although we did had some financial repercussions uh, during the first um, uh, quarantine period, uh, sometime around March, but we were able to quickly bounce back um, okay. due to the nature of our business as well. Yun. Mm -hmm. So, yun. so, yeah. So galing no. So from 10 naging 17 tapos growing steadily. Um yes, so just yes. a question no. So since Hyperstacks delves into a lot of industries then, but I think you had clients now with the banking industry and the financial sector. So how does yes, Hyperstacks did. play into that? Uh because as far as well here at Wealth Arkino, may growth na ngayon yung mga fintech industry medyo tumataas yung, alam mo, yung popularity with fintech, such as CIMP, yeah, yeah. GCash, Paymaya, ING. So, how do how does Hyperstack no, fit into that picture? Okay, so, um, how we got introduced into the fintech industry was that mm -hmm. um, way back in 2018, we realized that um, as, uh, we, were, we were having a brainstorming session of what industries uh, should we take and um, looking at the local market I mean uh, for because ever since we've only worked with foreign uh, clients before. yeah mm -hmm. so we tried to uh, took a look at how the local market is and what are the potential opportunities so we realized that uh, there are a lot of banks in the Philippines and and uh, most of them, uh, especially the rural banks, don't have access to digital services. Mm -hmm. So their customers are mainly using the traditional methods, which is going to uh, their office, to the branch, and uh, it, which is a very time-consuming. So 
within that same year, we also got um, enrolled in a accelerator based in Malaysia. So it was a fintech. Um, the theme was about fintech. So we were able to uh, get qualified and and we eventually went to Malaysia for a month um, to understand uh, better about the fintech um, scene in Asia, not just in Philippines. Mm-hmm. So we were the only Filipino team there and we were able to meet wow, a, lot, a lot of uh, fintech leaders. Um, some of the fintech leaders that we were able to um, mingle with were um, Trang Lo, then there was Juristech, then we were able to meet with uh, CIMB VPs as well. Mm-hmm. So it was a very learning experience. So from that experience, uh, when we came back here in the Philippines, we tried to sell our services for developing um, mobile applications for yeah. uh, financial sectors. Uh, but it did not turn out well because there was no urgency at the time. Okay. And uh, But over after a year we were still we were able to work on work with a financial uh, service a financial institution finally and um, it took us a year to develop the mobile app that they were asking and um and it's been really it's been a big challenge because uh, you, there are a lot of things that you have to understand uh, in terms of uh, balancing or, or the balance sheet accounting uh, managing loan products so it's something that we did not expect early on, but uh, we were able to overcome as we were developing the mobile app. So it was a challenge. And um, so far, uh, there right now, we still have a lot of um, inquiries of our services, and we're still um, actively looking for potential partners in the mm-hmm. financial institution space. Yeah. Um actually I want to bring that up no. Na walang masyadong sense of urgency back in 2018 because mm-hmm. I think back then medyo bago-bago pa yung concept on fintech and um bago pa din yung idea of having a digital bank lalo um yung CIMB, ING just I think recently. Yeah, yeah. Again. Tapos I also like to point out na oh tama, maraming rural banks na walang pa masyadong digital application or wala masyadong online presence, di ba? But usually, mm-hmm, yeah, yung yeah. mga online presence ay yung mga malalaking banko like BPI, BDO, and I think the leading right now is Union Bank or Security Bank. Tapos I think we said mm, yeah, yeah. RCBC is coming. So for this, di ba, rural banks, um, mm-hmm. how, how do you think can they, you know, benefit from this? Because I think right now during the quarantine period, na-realize na mga tao na Pwede pala exactly. mag-online, di ba? So, how yeah, can yeah. rural banks take advantage of this situation right now? no? And of course, access mm-hmm. to online services, di ba? Kailangan ba talaga yeah, app yeah. or kahit simple website would do for them tapos magkaroon ng online system? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of uh, potential for um, digital banking here in the Philippines. Knowing that we have around 300, I mean 600 plus um, fi- uh, formal financial institutions here, and um, let's say only 10 per- less than 10 percent of them probably has some um, on uh, digital services. And um, if you look uh, at the situation right now, uh, where people are I mean, people suddenly opted for cashless things and which yeah. no one actually um, paid attention that much before. So even though um, way back in 2018, um, BSP was pushing for um, 20 by 2020. So which that means um, mm-hmm. they want to put uh, 20% of all the transactions in the Philippines uh, to Put it, put it on a digital level. Yeah, around cashless. 20%, 20%. Yeah. So from cash to cashless, that was their goal. But uh, it seems that banks before were kind of hesitant about this um, new technology. And oh, I mean, it's not really new. Uh, it's been there for a couple of years already. And they just didn't um, realize until now that uh, people suddenly wanted to go cashless because of the fear of getting COVID uh, or, you know, something like that. So there's there's just um, so much potential and there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of um, players coming in into the market because um, they realize that 
because right now banks did realize that how important digital services are, knowing that some of their branches are can only accommodate a very few uh, empl- employees and customers uh, for the time being. Mm-mm. So yeah, no, because right now I think my mga bank branches pa ata na closed because of the uh, current situation, and of course, yung being online would help them continue the services that people need. And yun nga tama, no, because I think I remember my ano before na uh, my article yung uh-huh. USP na they're trying to make it cashless, but uh, right now um, I think my counting issues. No, regarding cashless. I think I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you're remember if you're updated, but recently I think um yung G Cash, I think may fee na sila magiging three percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that. ano ba yung mga hurdles no? Just a segue because uh expectation mm-hmm. kasi ng tao na kapag cashless, pang less fees, less everything, tapos mas easier yung transaction. So ano yung maybe potential hurdles no? Here in the Philippines, sa fintech, like what Gcash mm. experience? Yeah, I'm quite surprised about the Gcash fee because um, basically um, they're charging quite high compared to other banks and um, players like uh, Paymaya. So Paymaya, they have a fixed um, cash in fee, which is just 30 pesos. For Gcash, it's quite high. It's 2.5 percent of whatever yeah. amount uh, you will cash in. And uh, one thing as well is that uh, banks right now who have their existing mobile banking apps, um, mm-hmm. their, their um, interbank transfer fees are are qu- quite um, low or um, I, I think most of them still have free uh, transaction fees right now. Uh, they mm-hmm. have zero because of the uh, situation. and. So I think uh, one of the challenges, uh, going just going back to your question, one of the challenges for uh, fintech right now is, um, I think I could say it's more on the uh, security part. Um, there's a lot of uh, fraud happening everywhere, uh, especially mm-hmm. on mobile uh, wallets. So if um, you're quite familiar with uh, some freelancer groups or uh, maybe even other groups as well, they've been yeah. consistently um, reporting some issues about their balance um, getting um, altered and this and, um, every now and then. And it, mm-hmm. it, it's a very, um, uh, it's in such a nuisance. Mm-hmm. And um, I think as well, um, verification um, online enrollment um, which is I, I, well I don't think of online enrollment is a really big problem for mobile apps uh, because right now uh, like I mean looking at the standards of ING and uh, Union Bank they uh, do their customer acquisition uh, very well um, it's very seamless and uh, it just takes you like less than 20 minutes to create a bank account and I, I just love the entire process. Mm-hmm. So most for so I think uh, most of the challenges um, for adopting um, mobile wallets would be um, more on the education of the consumers because um, mm-hmm. look if you if you um, give if you tell a millennial to open a bank account they would certainly open it uh, through their mobile app. Well, uh, whereas if you uh, pro, you uh, hand it over to some older people, uh, they would still prefer going to the uh, bank itself. So there's still a lot of, um, mm-hmm. uh, especially the, the, the debt market um, is still, um, uh, how do you call this? They, they still need to get educated and uh, to tell them that it's secure uh, despite uh, the things that um, um, that are sh- are showing in social media that their accounts are getting altered. Um, mm. it, it's still good to. Uh, I think it's best to tell them that no, uh, this is secured, and um, and as well as financial institutions should ensure that um, um, the security and of, and the reliability of their services. Mm-mm. Um. So get, regarding pala that, no, I think security uh, issues are a common thing. With the IT industry, lalo and of course, the mm-hmm. and com well, of course, common sa fintech because it's also IT related. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so I guess it's just a systems issue which can be resolved quickly. So for those na ano tama mm-hmm. naman no, it's also part of the education dahil uh, medyo bago bago yung yeah, tech, yeah. and of course you older generations are still trying to get acquainted with it. So if my proper information dissemination lang regarding the pros no of having a digital account, mm-hmm. a digital bank. Um, actually, I also have yeah, an account yeah. sa ING. And it just took me mga, what, 15, 20 minutes na to open an account kapag clear na yung process. So, yeah, that's how I mean, quick, last bit, night. Yeah, between opening my bank account sa BPI, which took me like exactly. three, three hours, four hours. Tapos sa uh, ING, just took me 20 minutes. Pero yung ano lang sa ING is that may mga fees when transferring to them. Because yun nga, digital bank. Mm-hmm. But I think may mga i- digital banks na nag rebate So that's also good, no? So parang more money in your pocket. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, there's a lot of freebies and free money from uh, digital banks and wallets right now. Um, I think there was a time in when I was um, using ING. I think it was a year before, around 2019. Uh, I think I got a rebate of around 1500 from... Oh, wow. Interbank fee because okay. they give you they give you like um hundred per peso um rebate for every uh, cash in uh, every four transfer you send to ING. So I did that couple of times and yeah, I think that was uh, really I mean it was good. It's it, it's free money. It's free money. <laughs> uh, so I think nayon fifty, uh fifty pesos na lang. Yeah, siya. yeah. But I yeah, I think yung ano lang natin sa viewers is. Yung advantages ng mm-hmm. fintech um, can also help them no, with their own mm-hmm. personal finance because if in case hindi sila maka-access sa uh, local bank nila, at least meron silang isang digital bank that can rely on for their own, of course, tax savings for their own safety then of their money. Um, and of course, yeah. actually, mas mataas din yung interest rates sa mga digital banks because wala nga silang physical office no versus a true, traditional true. bank na may physical office sila dito sa Pinas. So yeah, um ano pa? Ah yeah, I have also a since we're delving into fintech no. And right mm-hmm. now, well, I'm also in the insurance industry din. So yung insurance industry ngayon mm-hmm. is actually going digital na. So a lot of e-apps no from various companies. Mm-hmm. So do you think <clears throat> sorry Hyperstacks can infiltrate this portion of the market, or do you think there are other opportunities elsewhere? No, because fintech then is yeah. a very big uh, ano eh, industry. Di lang siya limited to banking, mm. but it can also be sa loans, sa payments, sa collections. Exactly. Etc. Not just in So yeah, basically uh, anything that involves finance uh, should be uh, called a part of fintech and even insurance. But I think um, working with, uh, we, yeah, we were thinking actually of, of creating um, insurance products here um, for, for Hyperstacks, but we, I, we realized that um, it's quite um, difficult to work with uh, the insurance commission and all the compliance. I mean, working with um, BSP for, um, to get compliance for uh, working with the bank, it's already um, challenging enough. So what more for uh, the insurance commission wherein um, they, you, they require a huge amount of assets. So there's, I mean, if, if you look at our um, other uh, ASEAN neighbors, uh, they have a lot of um, insurance products that are available um, at the tip of their fingertips. So, but here in the Philippines, I think that would be a challenge and I don't see us look uh, moving into towards that uh, industry anytime sooner Mm-mm. unless um, there's a lot of disruption uh, happening already um, yeah so that's how we stand about the uh, insurance yeah. for, uh, for now uh, but for let's say payment collections and of course mga loan payments do you think um, hyper stocks can let's say infiltrate that space because yun nga, yeah, na disrupt, no? <laughs> na, yeah. ano, na disrupt yung mga ano, loan payments and of course yung mga bill collections. Um, so yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so how does? So I, I think. Yeah, so how does Hyperstacks fit into that picture? Since you're a tech company, then. 
Mm-hmm. So I think uh, moving towards loan collection would be our next step since uh, right now we're working with uh, loan origination applications. So the next step would be if you release a loan, you should know how uh, you should have a way to collect it. And uh, we've been receiving a lot of um, inquiries from uh, financial institutions if we have this kind of uh, technology right now and sadly we don't have it. We don't have it yet. So, but uh, there's a lot of um, inquiries coming in about the loan collection system, and um, I think it's really important um, to to work on that uh, aspect as well. Since um, if you look at the rural banking landscape, um, some of their clients just spend uh, 200 pesos just to go to their uh, branch to pay yeah. a loan, and it's a lot of money. So mm. it let's say they go to the bank around twice a month or at least once a month that's that's a significant money in a year mm-hmm. and um so we should uh, always look uh for and we should look into how we could uh, ease those um uh the, ease that pain point for the client which is uh, cost of money transportation and time and um I think right now um, it's it's a good opportunity because um, especially that um, branches are very limited in operating hours. So with this uh, pandemic going on, maybe it's um, something that banks are looking to reconsider more to invest in digital services like uh, online um, loan collection softwares as well. Mm, I think, <coughs> sorry. I think another thing mm-hmm. to highlight no um is yeah tama ka na ano it would take a lot of money going to the bank no kapag 200 pesos let's say going just, yeah. just one transaction no 200 pesos na what if you do it twice a month so 400 na tapos you do it for mm-hmm. one year 4800 pesos na yan so yeah um having that online app to pay that loan would save already 4800 pesos and that money can be used for other things already. So it will really help exactly. the consumer. And of course, another thing to highlight, diba, is at least alam din ng client na may payment terms and alam niya kung magkano yung percentage ng loan at on time din yung pagbabayad. Diba? Because I think, exactly. because from my experience with working with clients na who has a lot of loans, a lot of debt, minsan nakakalimutan nila magbayad. So that... Yeah, yeah. Um, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Tapos, kung hindi nila kaya, it did differ. So, that will just pile up the debt. And of course, lalo na kapag accumulating yung interest every month. So, that in- that debt increases then over time. So, at least mm-hmm. having that app, no, maybe in the future, or that service no, for paying the loan um, would really help ease the burden of the client in, of course, paying the loan. So, if you pay the loan less debt, and of course, less accumulated debt in the future. So, parang peace of mind at the end of the day. Tapos exactly. Parang, kahit instead of having nightmares every night, natutulog ka na lang sa bahay. <laughs> Tama. <laughs> and I, I would like to ano, I'll give an example. Um, I think uh, it was a bank somewhere in northern Luzon that mm-hmm. uh, they built a use case for the loan collection system and it was very successful um, knowing that um, yeah, they they have they only have one branch and mm-hmm. just their main branch. And what they did was that uh, instead of hiring collection officers, they used um, lo- the they leveraged the local communities in different barangays. So they assigned they assigned um, one or three people to be a loan collector in that barangay, and people will just have to don't have to go to the main branch already. They just have to go to the assigned loan collector and they will just mm. pay 15 peso convenience fee which okay. is yeah. which is cheaper way cheaper than what they usually spend just to go to the bank because sometimes yeah. if um, those um, clients of them that are quite far away would spend around 200 or 100 in a day and they would spend the entire day uh, just to pay their loan so with that initiative it's just through a mobile app and uh, and uh, they just had to go to the, the assigned person, uh, the assigned loan collector, pay 15 pesos on top of the loan. And that's it. 
Mm-hmm. And the assigned loan uh, collector would just have to remit it on a weekly basis. So, but the information is updated um, real time once they make a payment, which is really good, wow. right? Yeah, ang galing. <laughs> At least alam mo na pagbayad mo, bayad na siya. Because minsan yeah, yeah, kasi you know, na-experience ko na yung sa mom ko, nagbayad nga kami ng credit card bill, pero hindi pa nag-reflect. So, parang nagdududa na kami kung nagbayad ba or um na delay yeah. pa or na defer so at least it's clear no to people na streamlined siya sige so exactly, i think exactly. last question since we're talking about fintech and uh, of course we want to educate people then mm-hmm. regarding fintech um i think the beauty of having a digital app or an online service is that you can access it anywhere here in the philippines no as long as you have let's say an internet connection no so for those hmm. na medyo takot-takot pa to start an online bank or let's say acquire an online online service, so ano yung maybe advice or tip mo on ano alam mo yun, for our viewers na medyo scared uh, to delve into it or medyo may insecurities pa. So what's your advice to them or maybe some tips on getting started because medyo baka nahirapan okay. lang sila to start. Yeah, I think um, my advice would be uh, don't be afraid to uh, try it out. There's not, no harm in trying. Most of the online banks and digital wallets that are available right now uh, don't have don't uh, require you to have a deposit. So there's uh, no minimum uh, deposit or maintaining mm-hmm. balance, and it's really easy to to um, sign up. And I'm sure. Uh, these companies, especially the biggest, the big, the big banks uh, like ING Union Bank, uh, they're investing a lot of money um, to to secure their services and also provide a seamless user experience. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just really convenient. Uh, I, for me right now, I can't imagine if I don't have a um, a mobile app uh, for the banking for my banking needs because it's just really convenient. I mean, you don't even have to um, go to the bank just to check your balance real time, and you can access your account anywhere. So what? Mm-hmm. And even in my case, uh, I have a lot of accounts from uh, different services, and I use it to segregate my finances. Like this account yeah. is for the bills, this account is for savings, this account is for this and that. Don't be afraid to uh, open any digital account it's free and mm-hmm. it won't even cost you much it will just uh, require some of your basic information which is fully compliant to the uh, central bank's requirement and yeah i think um I, right now in this uh, modern age where people are very busy um it's hard to find time um, doing your the things you love what more if uh, finding time just to visit your bank and and on the uh, next one or two hours of your life uh, lining up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I, so I just like to highlight now what you just said na yung safety ng mga tao and of course spending mm-hmm. it at home lang doing it at home so medyo convenient exactly. too. and of course you don't have to alam mo yun, risk a lot of time just to go out just exactly. to do one payment so you can just do it online. As long yeah, as you have the internet. Yeah, time is also money. Ayun. So I guess that's all now for today. So how do we get in touch with you now? Or how does our viewers get in touch with you if you have any more questions? Or do they want to acquire your services then? So how do they reach you? Yeah, um, uh-huh. you, you can reach me through my uh, email. Um, you can mail me at graham at hyperstackinc.com. Mm-hmm. And um, you can visit our Facebook page and website as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, in once this video has been is already posted in our channel, I'll put the page description, uh, page in the description below, where at least people can oh, sure, sure. It and then check it out. Then, so you, so I guess. Okay, okay. Just let me know what other details you need, but I can send it to you. Yeah, sige. Ayun, sige. So I guess that's it, guys. No, so I hope you enjoyed our discussion with Graham, the CEO of Hyperstacks. No. And of course, a bit enlightening then on how the company does in the fintech industry. Then. So, yeah. so, yeah. so if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up.
no? Give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Ingat. Bye.